Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting Lesson. In this video, we're going to be going over process costing, both the weighted average and the FIFO method side by side. So what I have here today is I have a problem that we're going to be working on. And I also actually have a pre-made Excel spreadsheet that I put together for us. Um, now keep in mind um, when you're doing this, it is going to auto-populate, but I'm going to be going over all of the calculations so that we understand how everything works. So first things first, let's start with a blank slate. And that way we can fill everything as we go because I did change some of these numbers here. All right, so the first thing we see here is that we have XYZ company starting off the month of January with 15,000 units and beginning work in process. Uh, these units were 100% complete as to direct materials and 25% complete as it relates to conversion. So let's go ahead and put that information in. 15,000 units, 100% complete, and 25% complete. Now keep in mind these notes here do want us to put in the percentage of completion for um, beginning work in process at the beginning of the period. For those of you that, that are familiar with the method, um, yes, we are going to be con uh, basically focusing on the period or the percentage of completion for this period, but the spreadsheet actually does that for us. Now let's keep going with our started amount. Uh, during the month, uh, let's see, uh, there were 90,000 units started. Um, it doesn't tell us how many we completed, so let's just go ahead and put in that 90,000. And our ending work in process, there were 16,000 units, and during this period we completed 80% materials, 30% conversion. All right. Now let's go on to the next paragraph. The beginning work in process had $16,160 of materials and $8,000 of conversion. So let's go over here. This is where all of our costs are going to go. $16,160 and $8,000. Um, it also tells us that during the month, the company incurred 85,000 materials costs and 150,000 direct labor costs, 63,000 overhead costs. So the materials costs are easy. Now ask yourself, what are our conversion costs? Well, our conversion costs are direct labor and factory overhead. So we're going to need 150,000 plus 63,000 for our current period conversion costs. There you go. Now you'll notice we have some blanks. We'll have to fill those in ourselves. So let's start with transferred out or our finished items. Um, so in order to do this, the best way to, re the best formula really to remember is that beginning plus added minus ending equals transferred out. So whatever we started with plus whatever we started during this period that gives us whatever was available, but we know we didn't finish all of those units because we had some left over in ending inventory. So that means that the units that we actually completed were 89,000 units. Right. Now for our total columns, this should be easy. We're just going to be adding up our materials and conversion plus All right, now that we all have all of that information in there, you'll notice that our spreadsheet has pretty much done all of the work for us. Um, our problem is asking us to find the cost of goods transferred to finished goods and the cost of ending work in process inventory using both methods. Um, but even though the spreadsheet does the work for us, I do want to run through each one together so we can kind of get a feel for what weighted average and FIFO is. Now, the weighted average method, when we're talking about step one equivalent units, they're only going to use transferred out and our ending work in process. So our transferred out and our ending work in process total is fairly simple. And when it comes to our materials and conversion, we're going to be taking 100% of those units because they're 100% complete. 
Now with our ending, however, our focus is only going to be on the units that were completed during this period. Now keep in mind when we're talking about equivalent units, we're talking about equivalency as it relates to how complete they are. So since we had 16,000 units, but only 80% of the materials were actually added during this period, then only the equivalent of 12,800 units as it relates to materials were completed. Same thing for conversion. We have 16,000 units, but they were only 30% converted, so it's only the equivalent of 4,800 units. So that give us gives us 101,800 for materials equivalent units and 93,800 for conversion equivalent units. Now FIFO is a little bit different here. When we're finding equivalent units for FIFO, I recommend breaking it down into our work in process beginning, those units that were both started and completed during the period, and our work in process ending. Now you'll notice that our beginning and our ending work in process are already given, but the started and completed number is one that we haven't quite seen before. So let's take a look at our data information here. Remember that the focus is on the finding those units that were both started during this period and at the same time completed during this period. So they went through the whole assembly line all in this month of January. So for example, when we think of those units that we started during the period, 90,000, did we complete all of those units? No, we didn't complete all of those units that were started because we still have some ending work in process sitting on the line. So in order to find those units that are both started and completed, minus out your ending work in process. So 90,000 minus 16,000, that gives us 74,000 and started and completed. Now there's actually a second way that we could do this as well. Uh, what we could look at is our completed units. During the period, we completed 89,000 units. And remember, this is an assembly line, so it's literally going in order. So we have our beginning work in process, it gets pushed through to being done, then we have those started units, they're getting pushed through, so on and so forth. So those 89,000 transferred out, those completed goods, they weren't all started this period because we already had beginning work in process already sitting on the assembly line. So another way of finding started and completed is 89,000 transferred out minus 15,000 beginning work in process. So the goods we completed minus the beginning goods that were already sitting on the line and were not started this period. And again, that gives us 74,000. So really two ways of looking at it. Started minus ending or completed minus beginning. I would know both formulas because you never really know what types of problems you're going to get on an exam. All right, let's keep going. So for work in process beginning, notice we have our 15,000, but see here this materials is zero. And the reason for that is this 100% and the 25% that is listed here, this is the percentage that they came onto the line this period completed. So when we started January, all of the materials had already been added. Well, when had, they been, when had these materials been added? Last period, so last month. So we have to ask ourselves, if 100% of the materials have already been added last month, how much of the materials did we add this period? And the answer is 0%. They were already all added last period. So for this period, we're going to take 0% of those 15,000 for our beginning work in process. Same concept for conversion. If these were converted 25% when they came onto our line at the start of this month, that means that we converted 75%. So if we go ahead and we just kind of look at our formula here, 15,000 units times one minus the 25%. So they're grabbing 75% of these 15,000 units. So really, the equivalent units for conversion for our beginning work in process is only 11,250. Now started and completed, since they were started this period and completed this period, we take 100% of those. And then WIP ending is very similar to our weighted average method, 16,000 times whatever we completed this period, which would be 80,000 for materials and, or sorry, 80% for materials and 30,000 for conversion. And then once we add all those up, <clears throat> We get our equivalent units for materials and conversion using the FIFO method. So as you can see, kind of laying this out side by side, 
helps us see the differences between the two methods. Um, it may take a little bit of memorization. I know I usually don't say that or recommend memorizing, but at this point, uh, if you're new to process costing, it may take a little bit of uh, memory to kind of get you started, but then you'll start seeing how these cost flows are working. Um, our second step as we run through process costing is going to be to find our relevant costs. So if we're doing the weighted average method, our, weight, our relevant costs are actually all of them. So we're pulling in our costs that are already sitting in work in process, and we're also pulling in those current period costs. However, if we're using the FIFO method, the FIFO method only uses current period costs. They're already going to consider this beginning work in process as moved out and transferred out. And we'll see that once we start assigning costs. But here in step two, when we're just finding our relevant costs for step three, we're just grabbing the current period costs. And you'll see those were grabbed down there. Our next step is going to be cost per equivalent unit. So we have our equivalent units in step one, our relevant costs in step two, and if we're finding cost per equivalent unit, simply cost divided by the equivalent units. So 101,160 divided by 101,800 units, that gives us rounded probably 99 cents per equivalent unit. Same thing for conversion, 221,000 of relevant costs divided by 93,800 uh, equivalent units. That gives us $2.36 in equivalent costs. Okay. Same thing when it comes to our FIFO method. We have costs of 85,000 divided by equivalent units of 86,800. That gives us approximately 98 cents and costs of 213,000 divided by equivalent units of 90,050, which gives us a conversion cost per equivalent unit of $2.37. All right. And our last step here is to assign our costs. So in order to do this, I recommend that you keep step three as well as step one close at hand. So what we're going to be doing here is we're first going to find the value of these transferred out goods. So we had 89,000, and since it's the same for both materials and conversion, we can actually add together our cost per equivalent units to give us $3.35. So the cost of those units that were transferred out is 298,131. Now for our ending work in process, we had some different numbers. We had 12,800 times 99 cents. And we had 4,800 times $2.36. Add those together and you have your cost of ending work in process. The FIFO method is a little bit more advanced, um, or not advanced, but more uh, complicated. The transferred out, we're going to grab all of our beginning work in process from the very top, that number that we ignored previously. Then we are going to be using our equivalent units to find the cost for each one. So materials was zero times 98 cents, zero. Um, conversion, 11,250, 11,250 times $2.37. And then these units were also completed, so 74,000 times the total of those two. Add those all up, and you'll get your amount that's going to be in transferred out. Keep in mind, that's not whip ending. That's our answer for transferred out. Now for our work in process ending, we had 12,800 units in ending work in process times the 98 cents. And then we had 4,800 units times the $2.37. Add those up and our cost of ending work in process is 23,888. So this tends to be a little bit of a complicated topic. Take your time with it. Do it several, several times over and over again. I recommend doing it on paper. Don't just rely on the spreadsheet because you're not going to learn it as well as if you were literally writing it down. Right. So this will be all for this video. Um, if you do have any questions or have anything to contribute to the conversation, please leave it in the comments below. And until next time, happy studying.